Hey there, Unawarriors. Anwi Goblin here once again bringing to you the latest in Unawar action. I'm very excited to be back once again. Uh, I picked a really special set of matches here for uh, these return videos. Uh, this is going to be from the Titans v. Titans matchup. The tournament's still going on. It just hit to the round of eight. And uh, I saw a couple of matches that really caught my eye. This is going to be between Glenn and and Willingham. Uh, I'm very excited about this. Glenn is a really accomplished player himself. He's uh, got, uh, he's ranked at level uh, rank 17 up on the championship leaderboards, and uh, he's done very well in some of the past tournaments that I've seen him play in. And now uh, the, we also have Willingham, and Willingham is definitely a player you're going to want to keep your eyes on. He uh, is currently playing in the September final match for that championship title, and uh, he also broke through the round of eight in July. He's a uh, He's doing very well in this tournament as well, so definitely keep your eye out on this player. And I'm really excited because I personally love the Titan versus Titan matchups. I love these mirror matches, and I, I think Titan v. Titan is something that you don't get to see very often when you're playing just random ranked or anything. There's not enough Titan players that these are very common to see. So uh, I'd love to see how both of these players are going to approach this problem strategically. Uh, looking at this map, this map is called... Uh, An Ra Uzan. And it's an interesting map because of all those river tires up in the center. It's going to be 125 credits per base. There's three bases, so there's going to be about 375 credits per turn after all the bases are captured. And looking at the map itself, it's a couple of things come to mind. First of all, whoever gets first turn is going to probably have a pretty serious advantage because mobility is going to be the absolute key of this map with all of these water tiles in here. Even with these uh, bridging uh, ports in the center, it's going to be really difficult to move anything. And being able to move along these sides, if any player can do flanks along the sides and bring units up through the center, that's going to be a winning combination, I'd say. Um, and then... I don't know if tanks are going to be a very uh, useful unit on this map, considering how these tiles are just going to block their mobility going up, and it's going to be so difficult for them to maneuver around. I imagine speeders will be really, really important in this game as well. Really excited to see how these players get out. Let's get it started. Playing on the upper right, left-hand side as the Red Titans, it's going to be Willingham. And playing on the bottom right-hand corner as the Black Titans, it's Glenn. Let's get the game started. Glenn is going to be taking that first base capture with his uh, <clears throat> mecha unit. Other mecha unit going to be moving up and taking the second base capture, bringing the uh, income up to 375, opening with a mecha on the uh, last remaining base. Willingham now going to go and pick up his uh, two bases, and is he going to bring out a mecha or a speeder? It's going to be a mecha. So we still have mirrored openings here. Speeder coming up as that first mecha moves out towards the center a little bit. And we're going to see once again the exact same positioning with a second speeder coming from Willingham. Plasma tank now on the board. And let's just take a look at this board real quick. So, um... <clears throat> Willingham has used his extra credits to get that extra that second speeder out a little earlier. And uh, here on round three, and uh, Glenn has got that plasma tank out there. And I'm, I'm wondering which direction that plasma tank is going to be most effective. He will be a really useful pin to keep those speeders from coming up in the center. So I could see that being uh, an extreme an advantage towards Glenn's part. Uh, and these two speeders are going to have a lot of maneuverability. Let's see what Willingham is going to pick up uh, with this last turn. A third speeder going to come up on the board. So it's three speeders against a speeder and a plasma tank. Uh, speeder first moving up into the center. Plasma tank going to move towards the right, trying to keep the, the speeders from being able to move onto that base. Another speeder coming up onto the game. Speeder from Willingham going to attack that mecha up on that brace, bringing it down to a five. Second speeder coming up, full health speeder going to attack and eliminate that mecha on that base. Is he going to cap it? The base is going to be capped on the upper right-hand side, and that could be really bad news for Glenn here. Glenn is going to have to deal with that as quickly as possible. Willingham porting in his uh, mech there to make sure uh, that nothing happens to that line and that that base stays capped. And now... Glenn in a lot of trouble. He's going to be moving. He's going to be taking a heal on that speeder instead of attacking with it. Moving his plasma tank up into the center along with his other heater, a speeder. Willingham now moving his speeder off of the base. Going to do the gang up on that uh, exposed speeder on the right-hand side. And that speeder will go down and that base will remain capped. Is Glenn going to be able to uncap uh, that base before that mecha is uh, unmuted from the port? 
More Mecca's now pouring in from Willingham, trying to do everything he can to keep Glenn from recapturing that base. Glenn now trying to chip away at these uh, Mecca's while they're still on cooldown. The plasma tank going to bust that Mecca open. Other speeder going to be able to take a hit at that six-shot speeder. Going to take a three-shot at him. Is he going to have enough? Yes, that other full health speeder will be able to move in and eliminate that three-speeder and try chip away at this wall that's been protecting that capped-up base. Mecca is now coming out from Glenn. A third speeder, a four speeder coming out from Glenn as well. Willingham now going to try and move his speeders in here, eliminate that five speeder that's blocking the path, and see if he can continue to keep that base from being uh, freed up by Glenn's forces. Gang are going to come. That speeder will go down. Other speeder brought down to a seven. Porting in even more mechas, trying to keep that plasma tank from being able to reinforce that base. And the base capture threat is now coming down from that pe mecha. The mecha has gone off its cooldown. The plasma tank will be hitting that cooldown mecha in the center, but it's not going to take it down just yet. Is that uh, four speeder going to go down from the center? It will from that full health speeder from Glenn. Going to take care of that speeder up on the port there. And... Uh, that other cooldown mecha will go down, but is he going to be able to eliminate the base capture? I don't think he is, and the base capture is successful, and now it's just a war of attrition for Willingham to just nail down. It's a war of attrition for Glenn to see how many turns he can ex continue before Willingham is able to claim the match. Willingham going to go for yet another base capture threat. Is willing? Is Glenn going to be able to handle this? And looking at this base capture threat, you'd have to, you know, you might say, is he going to be able to attack it? Yeah, he can get rid of the threat. But instead of using the speeder to, to divorce, to, diverting these speeders to be able to attack, maybe this speeder here or this speeder here, or, or and try and do some more damage defensively, he's going to have to waste resources by bringing one of his speeders to this position and eliminating that mecha before the third base goes down Willingham going to continue along with the pressure bringing in another full health speeder that speeder in the center is it going to go down no it's going to remain at one health but it's no longer going to be effective in any uh, fighting capacity the plasma tank desperately trying to move it up into the center and deal with some of this speeder aggression Glenn is going to be able to defend that base the base capture will not go down the other five speeder in the center is that going to limit no it won't be eliminated it is brought down to a two health but Glenn doing a very good job of forming a wall protecting that base from getting any more cap so that Glenn, uh, Willingham can no longer port in mechas and threaten base capture. Another mecha coming up from Glenn. Glenn going to continue to, uh, Willingham going to continue to barrage these speeders and break away that wall. That speeder is going down to a four health. It will get eliminated by that 10 shot, I believe. And it is going to get down, and the mecha is exposed, but Willingham does not have enough forces yet to attack that base head-on. Bringing a plasma here, that's going to be a pretty effective force multiplier in the coming turns on that flank. Continuing to hammer these speeders from all directions, coming from the south with another speeder. Glenn having to divert more speeders over to the side to keep uh, that speeder aggression uh, under control. Getting a very nice 6 health heal for that 7 speeder in the center. Porting over his mech to the other side. And Glenn is trying to cap and get another base capture on the left. Is Willingham going to be defended? He's been so focused on the right-hand side that he hasn't been able to divert enough resources. And I think that Glenn is going to be able to get a base steal. This could be a real big swing in the match. Willingham healing up his speeders, just trying to, instead of trying to uh, win a losing battle by getting eliminating that speeder on the other, he's decided to heal up his speeders here on the right-hand side. So Willingham is going to have to concede this base, but instead he's going to be able to... Let's look at the war report just to kind of give an idea. So, yes, Willingham is about to lose a base, but what kind of a credit advantage does he have? It's actually not that intense. It's only about 100 credits. But if we look at uh, forces on the board, Willingham does have all of these speeders and this tank in position to threaten this base. So even though this base catcher is going on the right, this flanking position might still be uh, too much of a threat for Glenn to deal. So Glenn is going to have to quickly capture this base as soon as possible. I believe, yeah, there's still another existing turn for this mecha here. So he's not going to be able to capture it right away. Glenn might be able to send over... 
Is he going to be able to eliminate that? He's got the 5 here can do 1 damage. The 10 here can do 3 damage. Can he send anybody over there immediately? I'm not sure if he can. He only has one more turn to respond. And in the meantime, he could just continue to press the aggression onto this style at the same time. So it's an interesting play. I'd really let, I'm really excited to see how this is going to play out. Let's continue the match. Glenn, going to try and bring some reinforcements and keep any aggression uh, from coming towards that 8-speeder the, on the right-hand side. Uh, using what uh, speeders he has left to try and clean up the left side, which is it's a good decision. He doesn't want to try and take that right flank head-on. He's outnumbered at the moment. Trying to regroup his forces on the left-hand side is exactly what he needs to do at this time. Willingham now <coughs> going to be sending his speeders and finally getting that base cap on the lower right-hand base, porting in the mechas so that they threaten the base capture, and that should be another base capture pretty soon. Won't be difficult for Willingham to set up a wall around that uh, base and prevent any uh, offensive capabilities. Glenn now continuing to heal up his forces on the right-hand side before forming the wall around that captured base. Gonna continue aggression against those speeders. That speeder on the left-hand side is gonna go down. Glenn's going to take some more pot shots at these speeders up on the left-hand side, trying to clear that side out completely. The Mecha is going to go and take that uh, base capture, and I believe that base is now going to take uh, into Glenn's possession. Glenn's going to try and even this out as much as possible, sending the speeders, trying to put pressure on that speeder that's capping the base, but it's just not going to be enough to get rid of it. I don't know if uh, Glenn is going to be able to get that away from uh, Willingham before that Mecha's uh, cooldown goes up. The tank and the speeder is now going to be pushing away this speeder-mech combination that uh, Glenn has on his bottom central area. And that wall is going to be very solidly built. you got a 9-speeder, an 8-speeder, and a full health uh, plasma tank guarding that area. Willingham going to be using these speeders he has up on the left hand, uh, upper left-hand side. And this is, this is what I'm... I'm loving the fact that Willingham is doing such a great job of effectively using the resources he has here on the left to form just enough of a mini wall to buy the time he needs to get this unit up into this position. And in the meantime, Divort heals up and Divort's all of his forces over to deal with this problem before Glenn gets a chance to catch his breath and regroup his forces. You know, Willingham realizes I have... He, he sees that he has superior forces now, and he has to use them before Glenn gets a chance to catch up. And that's exactly what he's doing. It's super effective. Glenn now moving up his tank, uh, trying to deal with these speeders head-on from the center flank. Healing up his speeders over on the side, moving his mecha and his building a plasma tank to make sure that those speeders and plasmas don't run over that uh, base too quickly. Willingham now going to quickly eliminate that mecha with the remaining speeders. His other mecha has finally finished his cooldown, is going to be able to make that base capture, and Willingham just going to be continuing his push, trying to chip away at that plasma tank at every possibility. And he hit it with that speeder to get the gang up, and how much does he get the gang up? The gang up's going to give a plus, a neg five shot on that plasma cannon, and suddenly... Glenn is in a lot of trouble. He needed that plasma cannon to last at least another round. And with that five shot, it's going to be really difficult for him to fend. And I, I just want to look at that real quick. Uh, Willingham making a really great play, sacrificing eight health of his speeder so that his tank could go move in, get the gang up bonus, combine that gang up bonus with the negative defensive uh, attribute for the, sitting, or for the plasma tank sitting on the bank base, and then got a five to three exchange on two full health tanks. That's really a solid play right there. These... Uh Willingham continue to just move along with speeder aggression, making sure that he's chipping away at health points from Glenn whenever possible. Glenn doing everything he can to push back this northern encompassing wall, but these walls are coming in from two directions, and it's difficult. If he commits to either side, the uh, side that he leaves is abandons is going to quickly be scooped up by other forces. Glenn now going to use that plasma tank to try and thin out this herd of speeders, but he really is going to have to use it with like one-two combinations. I don't think the plasma tank alone is enough to deal with how many speeders are up on that northern area. Healing up his speeder over on the right, trying to move his mecha and plasma tanks to meet this challenge. The plasma tank is now at uh, only a three health left. He's got his other full health, 
Uh, Willingham now moving his speeders down. Going to try and clear out some more of these forces, empty out some of these slots. He's going to eliminate that mecha. Is one of those speeders going to go down? It's very possible. There is a 6-8 and another 8 health speeder that possibly could hit them. Moving his mecha over, trying to just get it into position. Forming a wall around that base so that nothing is going to be able to move in and cap the area. Once again, Willingham going to use this opportunity to heal up his right flank uh, speeders. Glenn now going to come out swinging immediately, going to try and eliminate as many of these speeders as he can. He is going to get a three shot on that speeder. It's not going to go down. Is that speeder going to go down? Finally, the speeder does go down after three hits, and it's still uh, six to three speeders well now it's six to five speeders on that flank so it actually might not be too hopeless for glenn just quite yet glenn doing a good job of building a wall around that base so that willingham can't just come, can't just swoop in and scoop it up that top point speeder is going to go down fr from willingham to glenn and willingham can continue the pressure hammering away with his tank at that mecha on the base using that rotation of speeders to eliminate it and is that base going to get capped it will be capped finally that 10 health speeder is going to be able to move and going to get and get a what six shot on that mecha and once again warping in yet another mech to get the base capture once it's gone off its cooldown <laughs> Doing some more speed regression on the right-hand side. Willingham doing rotation of units. Is he going to get another kill? No, but he will reduce it down to one health. And uh, that's no longer... Oh, and it is going to get eliminated by that four health speeder at the end. Building it another wall. Blocking Glenn from his advance. You've got the plasma tank here and the plasma tank here. So these speeders have absolutely no path that they can get through unless they want to go through this central pass all the way up which is easily going to be blocked by the speeders can just shift their position from here to here and it's going to be really hard to get to this base and now this really was the only only play for glenn to go for was to make this base and i feel like this wall is kind of barring him from getting there the question is how many turns can willingham get this game from uh being finished Glenn now, trying to get a heal on that tank, get as much defensive usefulness out of it as he possibly can. Going to be sending his speeders in here to try and take away that base cap. Is he going to have another speeder that can hit it? Yeah, that last speeder can just make the range, and that speeder is going to go down, and Glenn is going to be able to block that base capture with another mecha. Two mechas coming on the board for uh, Glenn. Willingham going to be advancing his tanks down here, getting a 3 for 2 exchange eliminating that mecha on the center with his speeders and the last speeder is going to be able to move in there and get a base capture yet again warping in yet another mecha blocking that speeder from being able to attack so there's only one attack space on this speeder right here he warps in uh willingham warped in this mecha right here and prevented uh, two different attack spaces and now the only position to attack this speeder is here which means that he should be able to hold on to the base capture now and how long does this there's only one turn cooldown left for this mecha so if he can hold on for one more turn that base will be captured willingham getting heals on the remainder of his forces glenn here gonna have to try desperately to move and eliminate that wall is this mecha gonna go down that mecha will go down is there enough to take out the speeder is that seven shot gonna be enough and the speeder does not go down but the force though but there is a fourth health there and the speeder will go down and once again glenn is going to be able to block that capture from occurring moving his tank and his mecha to prevent those speeders from getting yet another base capture on the right on the left hand side Willingham bringing these speeders in gonna eliminate that mecha there but he's is he gonna have enough to kill that tank I don't think he will moving that speeder speeder here gonna hit the tank first to give the gang a bonus to the other eight shot tank and how much can he hit him for gonna hit him for another three to two exchange and now that tank has two health on Glenn's bank tank there and that tank is not gonna be as effective anymore Willingham continuing his barrage of speeders on uh, Glenn's forces on the south side. That mecha will once again go down. And is that 10 health mecha going to... Uh, he is going to cap it instead of waste the mecha there, which is a good play. He doesn't want to send this mecha here and try to capture it immediately where, it will be, where it's just going to get destroyed by these couple of forces right here. Instead, he's going to cap it with 
this uh, speeder and then try to eliminate at least maybe one, maybe two of these units here and f form another defensive perimeter, then bring in this now unfrozen mecha, which could make the which threatens the base capture as soon as possible. <laughs> Going to take a two-shot uh, exchange with that uh, tank there. Willingham continuing to build more speeders for as the pressure mounts. Glenn going to be using that tank, trying to eliminate that speeder that's threatening his position there. The eight-shot speeder should be enough with the Ganga to eliminate it. And that veteran uh, three-health uh, speeder will go down. Getting a heal on his remaining speeder there. Glenn moving his tank away, bringing his mecha up, trying to keep that tank from getting eliminated. Willingham's tank going to take a four shot on that mecha. That mecha should go down. Continuing a barrage of speeders. Just got another heal there. A three heal for that speeder, bringing it to full health. Tank going to be taking a five shot. Is that mecha going to be able to go down? I don't think it is, and that base will hold. Willingham continuing to hit the tank. Is the tank going to go down? It's only at one health. Gonna take the shot and the plasma tank finally going down on the south and now there's nothing to stop Willingham from taking that base once and for all. Base capture coming in from Willingham, getting a six health on his speeder. Building at another speeder here, building another speeder here. Getting a two health, and now it's on to Glenn. And is Glenn going to be able to get that ten he that ten full health um, mecha off the base, bringing in his seven shot to eliminate the speeder? But he's not going to be able to eliminate it, and instead trying to do as much damage to the other speeders there. And the base capture is finally successful, and now Willingham just has to make one last final push onto the remaining base to win the game. Willingham continuing to barrage these tanks. Is that tank going to go down? Using the gang up bonus to boost his attack on this uh, speeders. Finally getting it down to a one health. Is it going to be eliminated with these speeders alone? It does go down. And now you have a sh chance for two full health tanks to eliminate that last tank. Speeder moving in here, sacrificing its health to give a gang up bonus to the full health tank. Full health tank now taking the shot. Going to take a 5 to 3 shot and another 4 shot and that tank is immediately going to get eliminated. Wow! That tank went down so quickly and that could very well be the game. We're on turn 18. Is Willingham going to be able to make this in 19 or will he need 20 to 21 chance to finish this round up? It's all about cleanup here. These speeders going to try and eliminate what's remaining in this, on the bottom half there. <laughs> Bringing that speeder down to a 5 health. The last speeder that uh, Willingham has is going to be able to get it down to one health, but it will not yet be eliminated. Building more speeders, just trying to spam as many of them as he can to try and gain control of every portion of this map. Glenn now porting his five health to divert away some of these speeders, but just trying to hold on for as long as possible. These last two speeders are going to go down, and I believe this will be game... Is he going to be able to eliminate these speeders within this turn? He really should be able to. He certainly has enough. Bringing in his four health. A one shot. Let's speed it up a little bit here. Finally finishing that speeder there. And the last speeder is going to go. Just a couple doing the remaining heals. And that is going to be the GG of this game. Guys, what a fantastic match. And if we just take a look at uh, at the results here, let's take a look at the war report. So Willingham took this match in 20, uh, in 20 turns, and he, it looked like he was really going to get delayed big time when uh, Glenn was able to come back and steal this base position right here. After this base got stolen, it looked like Glenn was going to be able to push it back for a lot of turns, and he managed to extend it to turn 20. Willingham wasted no time getting this base capture really early with that, with just a fantastic 1-2 combination of base capturing. And then 
I, I, I really enjoyed some of the play we had. Willingham got some amazing shots on those tanks sitting on the bases. He really did some very clever usage of the gang up combined with defensive negatives. And it, it, it paid off in dividends. Those five shots for an exchange of five health for one tank for three health to the other tank, those bonuses rack up really, really quickly. And those tanks were the backbone of the remaining defensive line for Glenn. So Willingham playing a fantastic game. And uh, once again, I just want to see what the credit kill. So Willingham pulling a kill count of 5,200 uh, against 2,650 in the end. So the time to beat for Glenn on the coming match. Glenn is going to have to take his turn, his uh, his next ch match. He will have to take the win within 19 turns. And uh, I'm not. Sh I, I think that's very doable on this map. But it's going to be ha it's going to have to be a flawless game to get 19 turns. Uh, the way this match is going, every move has to just come. You have to get all the rolls. So it's going to be a very difficult 19 turns for Clan. I'm not saying he can't do it. I, I think he's absolutely perfectly capable of playing a flawless game. That's why he's so uh, highly ranked right now. He's able to play those games, but sometimes, you know, you get a bad roll. Uh, it's it's difficult to pull 19 on this. I think 20 was really short for uh, how, how much this got extended. I'm really excited to see how it goes. Let's see how it goes into round two of this set. Guys, this is Onwee Goblin signing out.